My name is Tracy Burns, and I grew up in an Old Testament Christian cult. Um, it's also a doomsday uh, belief system. Um, so when I was 15, I had witnessed so much abuse of finances and um, power and even children uh, that I told my mom I didn't want to go anymore. And fortunately, she let me walk away. And not long after that, the entire church was um, de uh, destructed or whatever. It changed, and it became something completely different. They did admit that their doctrine that it was founded on was inaccurate, and they changed. A lot of people left and wanted to continue on in the same uh, vein, being told what to do. But some people uh, tried to be like normal Christians. So I went into the moral desert and tried a lot of different things to figure out what worked for me. I knew that I did not want to be a Christian. I didn't want to be associated with Christians and I felt like I was more of one than any of the Christians that I knew. And so I um, discovered Native American beliefs. I studied um, Wicca. I studied Buddhism and I studied science. And I was brought from Austin, well, technically Dallas, to L.A. Literally, I felt like I was drug out here by the collar of my shirt. And I knew it was for a spiritual purpose, even though I wasn't even a believer at the time. I just didn't know what that purpose was. And so after being out here for a couple of months, my marriage fell apart. The job I was brought here for, uh, they took it away before I even started. And... Um, I was basically a single mom in a city with no family, no relatives, no friends, and no job. And so it was a really trying time, and definitely um, kind of the backside of the desert that you hear about, if you know anything about the Bible, the, the place where um, the Israelites spent a lot of time. And I feel like God used that time to purify my heart and to, to make me... Um, need him and to draw me into him and so about six years into maybe four years into my time here in LA a friend from work invited me to the Oasis it's a church here in LA and she was the first person that invited me and I said yes so that reminds me that how important it is to invite everyone because um, I feel like everybody has a God-shaped hole in their heart that they're trying to fill and they don't even know it because I didn't and so I went, and I liked what I heard, but after a while, um, the series that we were in on relationships ended, and it got back to business as usual, and it was a lot of, like, hands in the air, and Jesus this, and Jesus that, and I really didn't want to hear it. At that time, I just wasn't ready for it, so I went back into the moral desert for another few years, and um, it was really at the end of my rope. I was struggling financially. Um, li definitely living paycheck to paycheck and um, dating all the wrong men, doing everything wrong and paying the price and just empty. And through a series of, you know, God ordained events, I felt the draw to try the Oasis again. And then when I told my mom, I'm going to give the Oasis another try, she actually thought I meant the restaurant in Austin. She was so blown away. Um, I went on my own and I sat in the back. And I, I really loved everything I heard. I felt like everything I was hearing was meant just for me. And the verses that kept going through my head that drew me to church were, uh, do not cast your pearls before swine or give what is holy unto dogs. And I knew that God was telling me to stop dating the wrong men. And um, I just dug in and I started to listen to the prompting and the little puzzle pieces that I knew were God. Uh, started to fall into place, and that spiritual life that I've always had on the inside, I finally found, like, my people, and I started to serve right away. I ran into my friend who had first invited me to church. I ran into her um, ex-boyfriend now at the time, and he introduced me to so many leaders right away, and I was just taken in, like, under their wing, and... The third service I went to, I gave my life to Christ, and not long after that, I remember them advertising for the internship, and I kept thinking, why would anybody uh, volunteer 20 hours a week and not get paid for it? 
and technically pay. <laughs> and so after a while, I was like, well, I would. I want to do that. I'm like, why not? And I realized, like, if I put my spiritual life in order, that my physical or my financial life would fall into place. And so I decided to run after God with all I had. And I served in outreach as an intern for six months. And I immediately, when I started church, I started tithing. I um, became celibate. And I served. And I read my Bible every day. And I saw the fruit of that um, multiply. And when my internship was over, the salon I worked at, the owner, literally that week was like, so now what? And I'm like, well, now I get my financial... Right. Well, now I get out of debt, is actually what I told her. And she was like, oh, so you don't want to buy the salon? And I told her, well, I'll think about that, which meant I would pray about it. So I prayed about it, and God worked out a deal that only he can. And I was able to purchase the salon uh, almost entirely in cash. And now the skills that I learned in internship I used to lead a team of 17 people. And... My family life has changed dramatically because now, um, even though like my father is still very broken, I pray for him and I've seen him coming around. Um, I give him honor even though he acts in dishonoring ways towards himself and towards others. Um, I saw him actually come to church for the first time in my entire life and I sat between him and my mother who've been divorced since I was an infant, and I've seen a lot of restoration, and I think it's amazing, and I know that only God can do that. And so I am raising my daughter in a godly home, and as she approaches her teenage years, I'm not as worried as I would be if we didn't have that community and godly leaders that speak into her life and you know want to see the best for her. So I don't have a lot of the anxiety that I would if I didn't have that church family and those leaders that are going to help uh, us navigate this next season. So I can say that since I started coming to church, my life has done a 180 degree turnaround and it's beautiful. I'm happy. I still have my sorrows sometimes. It's not all perfect, but it's incredibly different and I don't have that hole in my heart. I'm surrounded by friends and family, loved ones, people that I know I can call them in the middle of the night and they'll be there for me. And a church that loves me just the way I am, but doesn't expect me to stay that way. That's that.